So the great way, uh, it says, is not difficult. But what actually is the great way? Well, the great way is, of course, a translation of the term Mahayana. Maha meaning uh, great and yana meaning a vehicle. Um, uh, but it also uh, can be translated as, you know, the way that the vehicle actually rolls. And yana, we come across this, you know, there's Mahayana, there's Hinayana, there's Vajrayana. Uh, so these are Sanskrit terms. Yana just simply means like a school. Um, it's, but more specifically, it's the vehicle by which we get from A to B. Uh, and again, this, you know, reminds us that the uh, that the Buddha's teachings are a way. That is, that they are a practical way. That's uh, something that needs to be done, you know, a journey that needs to be undertaken. So this whole notion of a way to travel, um, a way to go, we have it obviously in the parable of the rough, don't we? Um, where a man, the famous Buddhist parable, where the uh, man has to make um, uh, a, a, a craft a raft uh, to carry him over a river from one side which is dangerous to the other side which is safe and this is obviously an analogy of the crossing over from samsara the realm of desire and suffering into the into nirvana the realm of peace and uh, quiet joy um, and that that has to be that's a journey that has to be undertaken so um, this great way still keeps with that same metaphor. And of course, when Buddhism came to China, of course, we had uh, in China um, Taoism as well. And Tao also means the way. The famous book, the Tao Te Ching, means the way and its power, um, or the way and its virtue, as in strength or power. Um, so again, Tao is often used as a sort of synonym also for the Dharma. Um, as well, Dharma and Tao are often used interchangeably in Chinese Buddhism, although um, I think it is contested that uh, obviously there are differences between Taoism uh, or uh, and um, Mahayana Buddhism as well. There's also, um, you know, considerable overlap, particularly in its relationship to nature and inherent nature. So this literally the Great Way um, means. Um, you know the uh, uh, the Mahayana, which obviously means all the, its teachings of the Mahayana, the Bodhisattva path, for example, the Bodhisattva path being the path from uh, where we are now. We take the four great Bodhisattva vows. Sentient beings are numberless. I vow to assist them all. Um, the passions are manifold. I vow to gentle them all. The Dharma gates or the teachings are many. I vow to learn them all. And the Buddha's way is supreme. I vow to walk it to the end because the um, the end of the uh, Bodhisattva path is Buddhahood itself. <coughs> and of course, the Buddha in the Mahayana um, prophesies that all beings eventually will become Buddhas uh, because we all have the Buddha seed within us. In Sanskrit, this was known as the Tathartha Garbha, which means the Buddha womb or the Buddha seed. And it was this teaching. Of, of early Indian Mahayana that would eventually become uh, the Chinese in, in Chinese Buddhism would become uh, the doctrine of the Buddha nature that all beings have the Buddha nature. Hence, for example, Master Mumon, great Chinese Zen master, who said that the treasures of the house do not come in through the front gate. And this was an allusion to the to our inheritance, that we, and, and that is that we've all inherited the Buddha nature, uh, and that it is to be realized, and that this is what Buddhahood actually is, the realization of the innate Buddha, um, Buddha nature in all beings, uh, and that all beings have that. And the Bodhisattva path is obviously geared, you know, uh, geared towards it. But the Great Way also um, points to something more than that, that it, it actually has if we can say, a sort of a other metaphysical um, consequences uh, uh, as well. Uh, because the Great Way obviously also refers to the Middle Way. Uh, and if we remember that the Middle Way was the teaching that the Buddha gave right at the very beginning, um, the very, uh, what's known as his first sermon, that was known as the first turning of the wheel of the Dharma. And uh, in this sermon, you know, um, he, he uh, the way he uh, sketches out the middle way was that it was a middle way between the extremes of um, ex living within extreme luxury, 
uh, you know, chasing after uh, sensual pleasures and so forth, and also the extreme privations and austerities that he himself had practiced um, when he was an ascetic in the forest just prior to him sitting under the Bodhi tree. And, uh, uh, that, and, and the Buddha said that both of those extremes are unprofitable and unworthy uh, and that we follow a middle way in between. And indeed, you know, we do. Um, so we, we also have practices of restraint, but we also have, you know, um, uh, we don't live in, you know, um, sackcloth and ashes either. Um, of course, one of the great innovations of the Mahayana uh, was that the uh, uh, anybody could actually practice it. Uh, you didn't just have to be a monk living in a remote monastery um, on the top of a mountain or deep in the forest, uh, that the ordinary householder, the ordinary lay woman, layman, uh, would be able to do so um, as well. Um, so th suddenly the great way, uh, the middle way, um, was not you know, a place high a mountain top or a forest um, it was anywhere and everywhere because the great way could be practiced everywhere and because the great way can be practiced everywhere the great way is to be found everywhere um, there's a there's a famous uh, uh, koan of uh, i think it's master joshu um, someone comes and asks him uh, a monk comes and asks him you know master master what is the way meaning the great way um, and uh, the master replied, oh, it's the road that just passes along uh, on the other side of the hedge, meaning the road that ran outside the monastery. And the monk said, no, 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 no. I don't mean uh, that, that road that way. I mean, what is the great way? And Master Joshua said, oh, that's the road that leads to the capital. So as this monk was obviously trying to, you know, um, uh, uh, sort of discover this sort of great metaphysical truth that you know lies somewhere out there or wherever uh, the master was bringing him back to the practical the the everyday basically the, the teaching was look at the place where your own feet stand uh, that's where the great way actually is uh, exactly where you are and when you walk you're walking along it um, and this is you know the fact that we are always on the way um, and therefore the training can be done anywhere is is extremely important um, in Zen, and this is something that's reiterated time and time and time again, that there, there are no other circumstances that are necessary for the way to be practiced.